We rounded third. We're heading for home tonight on Spaced Out Radio. My name is Dave Scott. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Really do appreciate earning your listening ears wherever you are in this beautiful planet we call Earth. I want to remind you that if you've missed most of this show or others, check out our free archives by going to youtube.com forward slash Spaced Out Radio. Do old Davey the favor. Hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you, including rocking out to Bumblefoot and re- reading up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire. Follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Instagram, Spaced Out Radio Show. Oh, yes, it is time once again for our man of space, the man who always wears a black Stetson when he comes in to SORHQ, John Hudson, and the unbiased UFO report. Let's get right into it, John, because it's been a a tumultuous weekend in news. And you know what? I'm just curious. Before we even get started, did you get a chance to see that conference that uh, came down, that virtual conference this past weekend? So um, I I saw small portions of it. Most of what I got of it was um, through the very, very hard work of um, of Joe Merja, who was doing some fabulous reporting of it. And so uh, he was giving us um, all sorts of information about it uh, in little video snippets. And, and uh, it was kind of what I expected, you know, no new information, but, you know, perhaps delivered in a way that some people might understand it better than the last time they heard the data. Uh, the only one I found really interesting, which, which is what I expected, was what uh, Eric Weinstein talked about. Well, I can say this. When you get the same people at the every conference saying the exact same thing, you're doling out a lot of money for that type of information, yep. repetitive and it's, information. And it's, and if you think about it, it's a broken, it's the reason why it's a broken model is because when all this started, the only time you got to see these people was if they came to your local habitants, right? And so they could take them on tour to six different states because each each state could only see them at that one time. And so it made sense to do have the same people talk about the same thing over and over again. Now, when it's a universal delivery system, that whole model breaks. It's very true. Very true. I, I, I talked to some people uh, who really liked it. They loved how virtual the makingcontact.com website was. Felt like a video game, but I also talked to people who were like, this is crazy. One of the biggest complaints I heard from the conference was, you know, you pay all that money and, you know, you're, you're supposed to wander around in your little action figure person on the screen and the people you were supposed to be talking to or want to talk to, the the guests, you're supposed to be able to chat with those who are speaking, they were nowhere to be found, anywhere. So at the minute that they finished their conference, they were logging out and not interacting with the people. You know, I'm sorry. It's but like a real at, conference. <laughs> I'm sorry, but at $250 a ticket, I want to speak to somebody. I want to speak to somebody. Oh, so, man. You know, either way, I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna give credit where credit is due. Okay. Credit the credit due is it was a great idea by Mark Sims and Danny Sheehan. Okay. And some lot- and some flavor of this is the future, right? It may not be this Absolutely. exact instantiation, but some flavor of this is the future. Yeah. But you know what? I, I can say this, whether it's it's this conference, whether it was contact in the desert or other conferences that have been virtual this year. I don't like them. I don't like them. And let me tell you why. The beautiful part about going, if you've never gone to a conference before, okay, there is something really fun about conferences. And believe it or not, for for those who are are not on the speaking end, okay, because I've only been at conferences where I've been on the speaking end. We're all usually there to hang out with. All you got to do is come up to us. You know, oh, if yeah. you want to pick, if you want to hang oh, out, we're desperate for companionship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that that human contact is n- needed. I talked to the, the group with uh, Contact in the Desert after their virtual conference, and 
as much as uh, they they enjoyed the efforts in trying to get it going, and it was difficult, they weren't fans of it because it took away from that humanity. And you know, if if you go to a UFO conference, you know, like I, right now, I'm scheduled to speak in 2022 at UFO Con in San Francisco. Uh, Lori and Finn. That's, that's 45 minutes away from me, so I'll get to go to that one. Yeah, I mean, when I go there. I want to meet my fans. Yeah. And you know, every person I talk to, whether it's Grant Cameron, Steve Bassett, you know, uh, Lori and Fenton, Melinda Leslie, we all want to meet you. You're part of the community. We're just the loud mouth, big mouth voices. Yeah. Right? Well, and, and let's face it. We're the safe ones to talk to. Right. I mean, we're, we're the ones that aren't going to start, you know, usually, right. <laughs> we're, mm -hmm. the, we're the ones that, you know, believe what you believe. Right. So it's like, it's, it's camaraderie, you know? Could you imagine the lineup for autographs that Chad Smith would have? Oh, it would be, it would be, it'd be like a, it'd be like a new iPhone coming out. It'd be madness. Oh. It'd be madness. You know, miles, now, I think until we get, miles. until we get VR, um, until we get VR, I, I, I don't see this whole conference thing taking off. Um, Cause I mean, I've had some VR experiences that I've tricked my senses with. You know, because your senses of having a hierarchy, you know, and I mean, it's crazy. I mean, I've gotten motion sick, like right. standing in the middle of my living room. It's amazing, but it's still very clunky. It's still very expensive and it's still very out of reach for a lot of people. It's going to take a while. Very true. Very true. All right. Let's move on to tonight's news with you. Uh, number one, uh, let's go into a little bit of politics here. Because the Pentagon reportedly set to declassify space laser capable of destroying satellites and spacecraft. This is interesting, John. So this is a hard. This is a hard. This is a hard one to 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 tackle. So this is one of the reasons why I'm excited about talking about it because the tendency that everyone's going to have is to focus on what the program is, because it's an interesting program. It's some sort of a significantly advanced defense system for outer space. There are some people that believe it's ground based, some people believe it's satellite based, some people believe it's there's all sorts of hypotheses on how it works. Um there's supposed to be a visual demonstration. So woohoo, you know, it could be something real pretty. Um and um and so you know and it is an SAP program. And so we're getting to see what it takes to get an SAP program declassified, which is a dry run for everything else we're talking about, right? We, we now know it takes the DNI and it takes the president. It takes all this coordination, right? So this is a really good way for all of us to see what does it actually take to get an SAP program declassified? So all that is all really interesting and that's what's going to attract your attention, but that's not the important part. The important part is the article that I link goes into a lot of detail about the mood swing and the cultural change that's going on in the military specifically related to space assets because historically secrecy was seen as an asset. And what some people, a larger group that's growing every day is starting to realize is secrecy destroys your investment when it comes to space assets. You have to advertise what you have. You have to demonstrate what you have because if you don't, no one knows about it and it's not a deterrent anymore, right? If you really want to be a deterrent, you got to advertise it. And so this is a huge cultural change that's starting to happen. And if it continues to snowball and it continues to catch on, this could radically change the entire presence of of the the security uh, apparatus surveillance is always going to be secret because that has to be secret but offensive weapons if you really think about it an offensive weapon kept, kept secret is intended to be used an offensive weapon that's publicized is intended to deter so this is a much more pure, much more a, a mature approach to defense and it specifically has to do with space assets and so this is very pertinent to us but it might be a one hell of a signal that there is change going on that might explain why now it could very well it could very well but but do you think that this these protections are just for built for earthly adversaries or do you think they could be part of uh, some sort of extraterrestrial defense as well Dave, I think that if you were heading that program, that it, irregardless of what you actually believed, you would write it, you would spec it, 
you would talk about it and you'd present it as if its only focus was Earth-based assets. However, a big freaking gun is a big freaking laser gun. <laughs> and if you can track one meter objects in orbit and pick them out of the sky and destroy them to a degree that you do not create debris falling back to the Earth, that is one hell of a weapon. And it could be used for all sorts of fun stuff. Well, that also opens up the question, too. This will be my final question for this one. Is, you know, do we have a defense mechanism already up there in place for any type of adversarial extraterrestrials? I don't believe so. I, I've heard reliable uh, murmurings of a deep space um, network that monitors incoming objects, but it's not great. Um, we won't hear about an Earth-killing asteroid until it passes Saturn. So basically, if anything's going to take out Earth, we're going to get maximum two days notice. Um, and when it comes to uh, closer objects, we've been doing offensive satellite stuff. So satellites that are able to defend each other for um, at least 25 years. You can find that in the declassified um, uh, satellite reports that come out about on a 25 year cadence. You can see that 25 years ago, they were starting to really focus on defensive maneuvers. So satellites have had defensive capabilities, but as far as the ability to actually offensively strike an incoming object, I, it's possible, but if we have it, it's probably what they're about to announce. All right, moving on. Luis Elizondo has been pretty silent in the last month and a half ever since the couple weeks after the DNI report, yet he's starting to speak again. Yeah, I figure the poor guy probably lost his voice. Um, you know, uh, yeah, so this is this is fun. And what's neat about this, and I'll post links to it, is that this is um, the next Gov, uh, is it the next Gov conference. And um, I got to look through my notes. I, I, I think I might've presented at this conference before. It's, I, I can't remember if, if I have or not. Um, it, it's not a conference that normally focuses on um, you know, UAP stuff. It's it's a conference that normally just focuses on next generation technology that the government it should be paying attention to, right? And so, um, but both Lou Elizondo and Senator Reid both were at this conference and both were interviewed and they are actually, those interviews are posted, which I'll post links to. Um, Elizondo's interview is interesting. Um, it's it's a little more um, it's a little more um, forthcoming. It's a little more personal. It's a little more emotional, um, in my opinion. Um, but it's not topics that we wouldn't necessarily cover. What's super interesting is what our dear friend Senator Reid talked about, because uh, there is a 44 second clip which I will uh, will be posting that basically where he talks about the fact that um, I believe it was the Omaha. Um, basically saw a, uh, a football-shaped object the size of a football field come out of the water. It was seen. It was photographed. It was, there was elint and all sorts of optical electrical data captured on it. He said that because of the data that was collected on it, it was the first real scientifically sane photographs that we had of, of an object, which I think was an interesting way of phrasing it on his part. And the, it then went back into the water. And so what that means is this is not the triangle that we've all been talking about for a while. This is a, this is a different case. And um, that's a big boy um, that came out of the water. Um, and so that's a, that as far as I know, I mean, there's possibly other people already knew about it, but for me personally, that was a, that was a new, new case that I, that I, I didn't have any knowledge off the top of my head about. So thank you, Senator was, Reed. Was there any reason or did, did Elizondo speak as to why he had been silenced uh, the last few weeks? No, he did not. However, um, I saw a, I saw a, a, a couple of days ago, he was meant to be on with, um, um, I think it was Christina Gomez. And that got postponed because of, of flight uh, problems that Lou was having. But before it, before it was going to be postponed, she had some language on her, on her thing talking about what they would talk about. And one of the things she mentioned was um, uh, there being a new news embargo. That there, that there was that there was some indication, and I don't know if that was her guess or if that was a tip that Lou gave her that they were planning on talking about. And so part of me is actually a little suspicious now that there has actually been 
a sort of a, a of a temporary news embargo, perhaps to let people digest, perhaps to you know who knows who knows the reasoning behind it. But he did not mention anything about that in the interview I saw. All right, and finally tonight, let's go to. I don't know what to think about this one, but Robert Salas, who has been been a longtime researcher and especially on UFOs and nuclear weapons, is wanting to set up a GoFundMe account. So, so this, so my my initial reaction was similar to yours, and the more I read into it, the more I liked it, which is the whole reason why I, I wanted to say something about it. And and that is that yes, the, the, what this is, this is a this is a GoFundMe for a conference on the nuclear aspects of of the ufo issue right and um but what's interesting is is that the way he's written it is very intelligent it's 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 very professional and he's only asking for ten thousand dollars and but what's really interesting is you can see who gave and how much they gave and i was amazed how much money he was getting and who was getting it there were some interesting names on that list of people that were donating to him uh, people giving five hundred dollars and more, and uh, he's already raised. Uh, well, actually, last I checked, I haven't looked in a couple of days. Last I checked, he'd already raised fifty five hundred of that ten thousand. So look, um, I'm going to look right now. I, I think he, I, I think he's got a good chance of getting that ten grand. And um, and you know, and let's face it, I mean, we all know how humans work. If he actually gets that ten grand then he and everyone else involved in that conference are going to work their bloody tails off and they're going to make that one hell of a conference. And so it, it could turn into something interesting. And I applaud him for trying to do this, considering the fact that he probably gets absolutely no love from anyone when he tries to do anything like this and, and get it, you know, get it supported or sponsored by anyone else. This is not a topic most people want to talk about. It's very uncomfortable. Well, he said $5,576 of his $10,000 goal so far that's not bad <laughs> until he brings in everybody who has done it before kevin knuth scientist five hundred dollars not sure who jared tarbell is thousand dollars jim semivan maybe that's just a a throw-in name same as chris mellon maybe just a throw-in name hard to say 100 bucks and 500 bucks We'll never know. Yep. Robert. That was very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. John, thank you so much. We're going to have to call it the night with you, my friend, yep, yep. but we always appreciate you coming on the uh, unbiased UFO report heard every couple of nights here on Spaced Out Radio. We'll talk to you in a couple days. Thank you much, sir. Have a good evening. You too, buddy.